so we'll kick things off. Um, we are very excited today to um, be talking about turning stories into dollars, how to create a content marketing machine that works. Um, we have Josh Johnson um, from Influencing Co. and Ron Gishri from Taboola. Um, so very excited for today's presentation. Um, just a few housekeeping notes. I'm Maya from Influencing Co. Um, and I'm here with Lindsay from Taboola. Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay Sacco uh, from Taboola, New York City. Um, so just to kind of go over a few uh, notes beforehand, um, for anyone um, kind of scrambling to take notes or anything, um, just a heads up that we will be sending over a recording and any offers and, and things like that that are mentioned during the presentation from Josh um, and Ron uh, afterwards. So um, don't worry about um, frantically taking notes or anything. We'll make sure to uh, send that over afterwards. Um, also, we would love to see you guys um, tweeting during the presentation, sending in your questions, all that. This is definitely um, as valuable uh, to you as it is to us. So if you want to tweet um, at either Lindsay or I, Maya S. Luke or El Sacco at uh, 519 um, and use the hashtag content machine, um, we'll make sure to get those um, in at the end for the Q&A section. And uh, without further ado, I'll let Josh kick it off and we can introduce our speakers. Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is uh, Ron Gishri, I'm the uh, Vice President of Content Development at uh, Taboola, and if uh, you don't know who Taboola is, we're the largest discovery platform, we're serving about 600 billion content recommendations monthly to about 550 million uh, units every month, and I'm going to talk a little bit uh, more about Taboola uh, in my part of the presentation uh, to you, Josh. Great, thanks Ron. Uh, hi everybody, I'm Joshua Johnson, the Vice President of Influence & Co. Uh, Influence & Co. is, is a firm, a uh, content marketing firm that specializes in helping companies communicate their expertise through high quality content published in online publications that their audience is reading. Um, and our teams come in and help make all that happen and, and help scale out those content initiatives internally uh, at different types of organizations. Um, enough about us. I would love to. Looking forward to getting into the, the full presentation and talk really about how how do you can personally build out a content machine for you and your company um, to create profitable stories and to build a business through your content. Um, one of the first things I always like to touch on about when anytime I'm talking about content is really highlighting why it's such a unique industry, why it's so important to stay on top of everything going on, um, and really what it comes down to is it's, it's changing so quickly. Whether it's um, the le legislation around like advertising through content and and displaying uh, saying it's sponsored content versus a, a regular a regular piece of native advertising versus uh, a contributed article um, or even like the trends going on in mobile and how um, how content's being displayed on mobile and being ranked there or even just obviously factoring in Facebook Snapchat um, Twitter and all the different types of platforms that are influencing the way you go about distributing content to your audience. So I, I like to just kind of highlight and share some headlines about why content is so interesting and so important for your business, but why you need to stay on top on top of this information and keep attending these types of webinars. Even if you feel like you have the basics, there's always so much more going on to stay on top of. Um, so so really, uh, and next I wanted to kind of highlight, so like we know like the industry is important. We know. Um, things are changing very quickly, but I wanted to highlight really why is content important and, and what's different about content today than, than what it was, or what's different about advertising today and about our society today that makes content so much more important. And really this, this stat right here, which is from Content Marketing Institute, kind of highlights that in one sentence. It's not obviously the whole picture or anything, but in the end, consumers want to figure out a way to get connected to a brand. They want to be educated about its products, be educated about how it may or may not be relevant to them. But they also want to do it in a way that they enjoy doing it. They don't want to be advertised to or spoken at and said, here's what you should be thinking. Um, they want to be engaging in, in a fashion that, that brings them enjoyment, brings them entertainment, or brings them value long term. If it's a B2B side of the conversation, uh, you want to make sure that you're educating people that you're going after. If you're on the B2C side, it's more to some degree about entertainment engagement um, from a branding perspective. Um, but really what it boils down to is 70% of consumers will choose to and prefer to engage and learn about a brand through articles and through content rather than through traditional ads and through um, uh, what, what advertising really was 
10 years ago, like how many commercials can you buy? How many banner ads can you get out there? How do you make sure you're just getting eyeballs on banner ads, that kind of stuff. Um, so content's really stepped into this shift in societal approach to how consumers want to engage with brands and how businesses want to engage with vendors and that sort of thing. Um, so, but while, while we know the trend has gone in the direction of, again, of content being more important and all of these things and, and why, 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 again, it's important for all businesses to be using content in one way or another, we also know the biggest challenge for marketers is consistently creating engaging content. Um, it's, one, it's one of those things that, sure, you can always go about uh, developing a piece of content, maybe one of every ten go viral, but how do you make sure that more of those are going viral and how do you make sure that people are actually wanting to engage with and interact with your content? Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a challenge that we see over and over again among any, any, any marketer that we deal with, B2B, B2C, um, big, small companies, it's how do we just create content that people care about and want to continue to share. Um, and it's one of the things that Ron will talk about later on distribution, that's a big piece of it. So after you actually build the engine for creating content consistently, the other thing that you really want to be worrying about is how do you make sure it's read consistently. So um, I'll, 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 what I'll do throughout this presentation is talk about the building of the strategy, the building of the actual content itself, how to get those ideas. Uh, but Ron will take over talking about the distribution of that content where Taboola comes in and um, does a very good job of helping their clients figure out how to make sure each and every piece of content you're creating is at least seen by people that you're going after. Um, so one of the first things I want to I highlight, uh, and again, this is a, kind of highlighting why content is very important in a sale and in a business setting um, to create business opportunities and to create growth within a company, and really it comes down to the three key, key components of a sale. Um, one big piece is trust and respect. It's why should a consumer or a customer of yours trust and respect you as an individual and your brand? The next piece is staying top of mind. How do you make sure that maybe when internal timing lines up, that you're the brand that's already top of mind with them and they're going to think of you when they, when they have a an internal challenge that you can help solve? And finally, it's their own internal timing and resources. It's, this is where you have the least impact on most of your clients, but do they have the money to spend? Do they have the internal people, the resources, the focus on what you're actually offering them? Um, so these are kind of the three things that we see as key contributors to creating sales opportunities. Um, but one of the things that, especially with us at Influence Co., where we specialize in the content space, is expertise-driven content from your brand and from your organization. It's how can you get your expertise into quality content, quality articles, Get it distributed, get it read by the right people, so that you affect those three those three points we just mentioned that creates and scales out sales opportunities for your company. Um, and what we see here is again the same Venn diagram, but I've replaced the the necessary item and key component of a sale with how content plays a key role in influencing and improving that element of the sales process with your business. Um, so first, like you said, we said we know trust and respect is important for you and your brand. So one of the things that content comes in and does extremely well is it's always demonstrating your expertise and your leadership in your industry. You're showing people why you are an expert and why you are a trustworthy contact and person in, within your industry because you're writing about it constantly and you're sharing your expertise, your insights, and your anecdotes. So again, you build trust, you build respect by consistently demonstrating that expertise and leadership. The next big key we know with staying top of mind is it's one of the biggest challenges we have today that every single consumer and business person, decision maker is getting bombarded with messaging over and over again, um, sometimes in negative fashions, but how do you make sure that you're staying on top of the consumer, not overdoing it, but doing it in a way that's building positive interactions. And again, that's where content comes in and plays a really important and key role is you're creating ways for, again, for you to stay top of mind, whether this is through email, through their social channels and subscriptions to your, your, uh, your Twitter profiles or your liking your, your Facebook page, whatever makes sense for your business. What it comes down to, again, is are you creating consistent touch points? And you can do that through content at scale with a, a far higher volume of people um, by getting them content that they want to see in front of them consistently. Uh, and finally, it's educating on the importance of your solution. Um, what, like we said, it's internal timing and resources for your consumer and your customers. Is this a, a priority for them or not? And, and again, this is, might be, especially from a resource perspective for them, might be where you have the least amount of impact for the, for the client. But if you're educating them on the importance within your content, you're sharing case studies, you're sharing profiles about why 
your client needs to focus on a specific area of their business one way or another, or if it, again, if it's a consumer for whatever problems that they may have, um, by creating content around that, around your industry and around those topics and tying it specifically to the personas of who you're targeting, you're educating them on the importance of the issue and you're helping them reshuffle and reorganize their priorities to make sure they're looking for a solution that you're offering rather than hoping that they stumble across it at one point or another. So those are kind of the, just in summary real quick, those are kind of the key areas that we see content playing a big role in the key factors of driving sales opportunities for your business. Um, and again, all this boils down to is like what's the type of content you want to be sharing and what is so important about creating really high quality original content and in the end it starts with you. It starts with you taking your knowledge, taking what you uniquely offer to your client, what your company, what your products, what your services uniquely offer to your client and helping to, digit, it's helping to tell those stories and share your knowledge within, con within content to your consumers so that their better understanding of what, of what your industry is, what the solutions are uh, and what you can do for them. Um, I think we, we always, especially in our uh, industry at Influence & Co, a lot of times we get questions on, well, if I'm writing too much content, I'm sharing my trade secrets so they don't need me anymore. Um, well, I mean, there's a couple of big things there. One is just because your car, it's easy to change your oil. Most people don't opt to change their oil even if they know how to do it in their car. They'd really rather pay a mechanic to do because the mechanic A specializes there and it's not something that they want to do or have the time to do themselves. Um, so that's one thing. And the, the other side of it too is what you're doing by sharing your knowledge, you're actually helping people really understand the, the, the problem in its entirety and they really quickly realize that it really takes a nuanced understanding of a specific industry or of a solution that's going to help them get what makes sense in their scenario. It's a lot of times, I mean, just because we write an article on the type of content you need for your business that doesn't apply to every scenario, it doesn't apply to every t different type of person. So there's still a need for a nuanced, specific relationship with your co with your company to help whatever whatever client you're, that, that is curious about leveraging whatever services that you offer. Um, but just because you've written a like generalized article about it doesn't mean that they can take that generalized article and really come up with something that makes sense for them in their scenario. So what you're doing really is, again, you're showing them the complexity of the problem, showing your expertise in the process, and, and really in the end you're also getting people that reach out to you that really value that expertise and understand why it's so important uh, to them in the end. Uh, so let me run through the, the steps really quick on how do you actually create your content strategy focused on ROI, ROI in the end and driving leads and business opportunity. Um, so the key things that your strategy needs is one is established goals. What are we focusing on? What are we trying to accomplish? If you don't know this, it's going to be not a good time as you as you get three, four, or five months down the road because you're really going to be stepping back and thinking about what did we actually accomplish because you don't know what you're actually trying to do. Um, a next key element is obviously the target audience. Know who you're talking about. Obvious, I, I run across businesses all the time that, that say, like, oh, we're targeting everybody, or we target this huge group of people, any business in America. Great, but at the same time, you want to get, get far more specific. Not just because you should be getting more specific anyways from a business standpoint, but because the way you're developing content, the more specific you can get in, the, in, in like a targeted reader, the better chance you have of really understanding what publications should you be targeting content on. If you're using a platform like a Taboola or using some sort of distribution engine, how do you want to promote to the, promote the content to what specific types of people within a company, what size companies, all those types of things are, are key factors to know early on to again build out the right kind of to content topics to be writing about and then also how you how to choose the distribution strategies you're going to engage with to make sure your content's read by the right people. Um, and then the final component is the, what, what metrics are you actually going to be measuring throughout this process. Content is in a flip the switch and direct marketing engine where you see the results in two, three, four months. It's something that takes a long time to get to the what usually the end goal is a sales, some sort of sales goal. But you have to have measures that make you understand the incremental improvements you're making on a day-to-day -day basis um, or on a month-to-month -month basis as you're getting to the point where you've actually built out the entire engine. So just understand what are the key factors that are incremental measures of success before you actually get to the point of starting the strategy and actually having sales in the end. Um, one of the good, th good things to, to be thinking about in that regard then is, this, is the content marketing funnel. It's like how do you know like what type of content to be making? Um, how do you know like who you're engaging with? Um, 
and, and, and what you should be writing for each different type of persona and then even different types of parts of the funnel and the buying process that, that they're in. Um, so here's an idea of how we've split up the funnel, the different types of content that makes sense for each persona, and and how to decide how you actually want to be educating each different each different persona in each different stage of the buying cycle they're in. I won't go into too much detail, but detail here, but it starts at the top of the funnel on driving awareness. It's these are people that are in your target audience. They are personas that you know you can help with, but they haven't even identified a problem usually yet. They don't even know there's a problem. They maybe they know that's a problem. They have a pain, but they don't know there's a solution for it. So you want to be creating content that gets them to a connect with your brand in a way that is value adding to them. So whether that's explaining solutions, helping to maybe explain why there's a problem that they're not even aware about, it's far more generalized and it's really focused on how do you just get them to better understand the industry and potential solutions. Middle of the funnel, this next stage is really talking about usually they've identified a problem and they might be starting to seek out, and usually they are starting to seek out, okay, we have the problem, now we need providers. We need people who's going to come in and help us fix this. What, again, whatever this may be, this could be accounting, this could be marketing, this could be sales, this could be a consumer who has a, it could be a vacuum cleaner, what if, whatever it is. So they've, they've decided they have a problem, they're looking for solutions. So you start presenting them information on, on how, to, how to fix this problem. So again, you could start talking about your brand, but again, that, that, that's a little bit too promotional many of the times. What you really want to be talking about is explaining the solutions, explaining how they can solve their problems, and explaining um, and walking them through all the different types of things they can do to solve to solve their problem, and, and really just again helping them understand the complexity of the problem at hand. And so, that, and finally, at the bottom of the funnel, they've usually narrowed down to two or three providers. They know who they want to be talking to, um, and it's helping them really understand why you are the solution over their alternative options. Um, this is where, especially from a content perspective, case studies play a big role here. Um, comparison charts of it. Can you could is there is there a way for you to do a side by side comparison of here? Well, here's our advantages versus here's what they do well, um, so that they can really understand which company is the best solution for them. And you can ideally hope hopefully help them understand why you're you are the best solution for them and you're the best product that they should be looking for. Um, so that's uh, just kind of like the content marketing funnel and really just talking about the different types of content you want to be creating. The next big piece we talk about again is metrics. What metrics do we need to put in place? so that we know we're stepping in the right direction, our content is being engaged with, and people are enjoying what we're putting out there. Um, and uh, I would always I always like to put metrics up there and explain this caveat that your business is very unique. There are a lot of nuances that when you're looking at your content strategy, based on your goals, based on who you're targeting, what, what your sales cycles are, that kind of stuff, are you e-commerce, are you a service company, whatever it is, these metrics vary greatly from strategy to strategy. So site visits, page views, reading time are all kind of generally accepted as guidelines for understanding are people visiting great, are people not bouncing off of one article and going somewhere else, so are they engaging further with your brand, and finally are they reading actually the content. This is a, it's, Of all these metrics, that's my favorite one here because it shows people are actually caring, they're not just jumping on the page saying, oh, I, I, got, I got here from some clickbaity headline, but obviously I didn't care about it, so I'm just going to leave. So I really care about reading time as an important engagement metric to know that what I'm writing really matters to them. And then finally, again, leads and sales. So those are, in the end, our, our company's priorities with all of our content is are we creating lead opportunities, people downloading, downloading white papers, e-books, um, attending webinars, that kind of stuff is important for us, and eventually how does that turn into sales for our, our organization? Um, so now that we know like how to build this content strategy and what we want to how to how to decide like what we're writing about, who we're targeting, where we're publishing, it's how do you actually create content? And really, what it comes down to is again, so strategizing how you're going to accomplish the last goal that you want um, for every reader. From from every reader, how do you make sure that you get them to the point that they're that they're getting as close to your end goal of a sale or a lead as as much as possible? Um, so one thing to think about early on is creating mini campaigns within your bigger content strategy. So yes, we know you want to build out a blog. Yes, we know you want to convert people to through a webinar, an ebook, or whatever. Again, whatever engagement metric you're looking for. But we also know like this content has to work together cohesively in, in one way or another. Uh, so one of the things that, that we do for every single piece of content we have, it fits into this bigger grand scheme campaign approach of content. This isn't a campaign approach necessarily focused solely on like how do I um, focus solely on like more traditional metrics, like how many eyeballs did I get, how much did, how many like 
earn media impressions that I get, that kind of stuff. This is focused on how do we make sure the content we're writing is linked together so that we're offering, whether it's one blog post, an ebook, and a, a guest contributed article, how do we make sure they're working together so we're giving someone the full, the full picture of a solution they're looking for. Um, so you'll see here we start in this illustration, we have a gated piece of content at top. This again, this is the ebook white paper. Typically, we see the gated pieces as the in-depth view of a specific problem, its solutions, um, uh, and outlining like so the actual resource someone would need to implement something off of it. So it's the last thing that someone who's ready to take action would need, would want to come in and download um, from us. But again, we can't just write this, throw up a landing page, and expect things to happen. We have to make sure we're writing content around this to get people to this result. So that's where these all these blog posts come into play. Is we we come up with topics that are tied to this end call to action, this gated piece of content that we have, um, and we we create blog posts that are either either targeted a specific subset of that audience, a specific buyer persona, or tied to a news item, something like that that we know is being searched, driving traffic that our clients are going to want to engage with, but that will eventually prep a reader to want to engage with this next and final downloadable piece of content. And finally, on these blog posts, we, we, we come in and we do what Influencing Code does best with our guest contributed content. One, one of the things that make us unique as a company is we're really good at helping companies create and publish content to online publications that our audience is reading, uh, say on the sales side, on, the, on like the entrepreneur side, and Inc. Forbes Entrepreneur, if you're going after entrepreneurs and business owners, great, or for marketers going after agency posts or other types of marketing specific publications. It's coming up with topics that these clients want to be engaging with and getting them on publications that our target audience is already reading. So we reverse engineer our results by, by starting with the end result of downloading this gated piece of content and creating articles and creating contributed pieces of content that lead readers and drive people to this result long term that we want them to take while also remembering that the priority for the whole time while we want to lead in a sale, the priority for the reader is, is not becoming a client of ours, the priority for the reader is finding a solution to their problem at hand. So our goal in the content really then becomes how do we give the reader the easiest path to the solution that they're looking for and these types of mini campaigns help you engineer success for you and for the readers in the end. Um, so again, this is, this is that chart kind of flipped down into a funnel for us and the way we, we look at it is how do you combine off-site thought leadership, on-site on-site thought leadership and gated thought leadership to deliver the branding message that you're wanting to deliver, but also, again, give all those pieces of key content that are important to, to your audience and important to each of them. Um, so here's an example of like one of these funnels on action, that something that we've done for our clients, uh, or that we did for ourselves, rather. Um, about a year and a half ago, for instance, LinkedIn opened up its publishing platform to any user, any member of LinkedIn, to actually write and publish full-length articles right on the platform. Um, we were one of the companies testing it a little bit before that, so A, we had some insights on how to how this platform performed, how how to get content that performed well on it, how to distribute content through it, that kind of stuff. So we A, we wanted to let everyone know that they were opening this platform, so we published an article on Forbes just basically announcing the news. Hey, LinkedIn opened its platform, here's why you should care about it, the key benefits, that type of thing. One of the things that we did, again, reverse engineering our end goal of driving a lead for us is we had a guide already live on our site that was an introductory guide to using the platform. So within this article about LinkedIn opening as a platform, we said, just so you know, we've been using this for a while, so here's a guide that we wrote on everything you need to know about making the most of it. Um, so we, users would click over to our blog, actually, then, and have an article that gave them every, everything that they need to know how to use LinkedIn's platform. And finally, at the bottom of this about the bottom of this blog post and throughout the content, we included calls to actions to download this white paper on the eight steps of thought leadership using using content and using distribution platforms that are available. Um, so we gave them the full solution of, A, you know the platform exists, here's how you use it, and here's how it ties to your business and ties to your long-term personal branding and professional goals as a, as a company. Um, just as an example here, within the first four days of this going live, this drove about 120 leads to Influence Co. And, and about 2,000 clicks and continues to drive uh, between 100 and 200 clicks and 15 to 20 leads on a monthly basis since then. And that was about a year and a half ago. Um, so again, though, when we're talking about content development, we're, like, so all those pieces of content I just showed you in this, and if you're building the funnel, you're building that, that like conversion chart of 
contribute posts, blog posts, and gated content is in the end your content best comes from your expertise. This is how you, you're creating original content that your clients want to engage with and they're going to find value in. Um, so it doesn't just come down to someone in the, in the content department to be writing up to be writing content for your company. It could be your sales team. It could be your founder. It could be um, a, a, ser a service provider within your company that works with clients on a day-to-day -day basis. You're, you have so much, you, your best marketing asset is locked up in the people that you have working at your company and leveraging those insights and leveraging those ideas that they have to create content is how you're going to create, again, original content that's really value-driven for the readers in the end. Um, and it helps to really communicate your, your team's messaging, your team's culture, your team's personality, and accomplish those goals that you're looking for. Um, one of the things that, that we do this to do this really well is we've actually built out a technology um, that runs the whole content creation process and houses everything start to finish, but also uses this, this component that we call a knowledge bank. And, and really what it boils down to is a, an index database of all the different ideas and opinions and anecdotes that we have as a company that we can then use to create new content from to scale content long term, but stay true to the same message and stay really original with all the articles we're publishing. Um, so we're able to, again, pull out these ideas consistently and create new articles directly from them. Um, so now that we said we, you know the, the key way you get core ideas and influential ideas within your content is from your, from your team, but you also need to have, again, your content team in place to actually make sure this is distributed and read by the right people put in a, a final form that people want to engage with. So that's where this is the people that we recommend when you're looking at your team um, and you're putting people together is it's, do you have your content strategist, the one who's actually going to step back, look at the market, look at the audience, look at the business's goals, and, and build out the actual editorial calendar and overall strategy. Um, the next piece is what we just talked about with the subject matter experts, leveraging your whole team to contribute ideas, contribute their own stories to, to the articles and to the content you're going to be creating. Next is the consumable editable. The consumable editor piece is: Do you have an editor that's going to take industry jargon, help rework it in the final version of an article to actually relate to the audience that you're talking to? Um, so they help stand between your messaging with what the clients and readers want to actually read in the end. That's again focused on them um, in terms of adding values to the conversation. And then finally, it's the distribution specialist. Do you have um, people that can help make sure? Your articles are being read by the right people. Um, for us, again, a big piece of what, we're what we do is helping clients actually publish articles directly onto other platforms to make sure you're garnering audiences there. But it can also be people who are looking at how do I do leverage paid distribution as well, like a platform like a Taboola, to make sure we're getting targeted audience, um, a targeted audience of viewers, uh, make sure that, uh, of viewers actually reading each piece of content that we're going through this full process to create over and over again. Um, and so like I said a couple of times throughout, really where Influence & Co's specialty in, in the content space is, again, it's taking someone else's expertise, creating the high quality content around that, and then getting it to that audience online. But the biggest piece of that for us is actually publishing contributed articles on these, on these different platforms and on these different publications. So what we did, we actually went to all of our editor relationships at these publications to get their opinion on content, on contributed articles, what's important in them, How do they, what's successful, what do they see perform well versus what do they not even let on the platform. Um, so we just wanted to share a couple of those insights that we gained. Um, so here's a quick quote just about why it's important that people within a certain industry are sharing content on publications. And it comes down to the fact that publications understand that the best insights are coming from people who are in the industry day to day. They know that they could, as a publication um, editor or writer, they could write pieces of content and, and create news blurbs and, and more journalistic content of that nature. But to get really insightful, up-to-date information, they need to get insights from peers within an industry that are doing the, doing the nitty-gritty stuff day to day. Um, so it's a, it's a big priority for editors to see a growth in this contributed in the, to see a growth with a lot of publications in contributed content because they know how important is to their publication to offer unique ideas and insights on a consistent basis. Um, one of the most interesting things that we got out of this research study was also what's the biggest problem that, that editors are seeing in content? So, and, and this, I think, really this spans the gap from contributed content to any, any types of platforms, um, whether people are running their blogs or promoting articles, whatever it is. It comes down to content that's way too promotional. Just A, it doesn't perform. 
it's not going to help you get published to, to these platforms. Um, and your, your, your clients in the end that you're trying to engage with don't care. Like they don't want an, advertor an advertorial when they're reading an article. Um, they want to know that you're creating a piece of content that's going to help them solve a problem. That's really all they care about at that stage. Um, so editors, and I'll back this up like I said, um, consistently see that the biggest problem in all these articles comes down to really making sure that you're not trying to promote yourself in the content, you're just trying to add value to the audience and sending the right message that's going to help them solve a, solve a problem. Um, one of the things I wanted to share here was just a quick glance at some of our numbers um, from quarter four, to, uh, quarter four last year to quarter one this year and showing why why we see referrals and really referrals from targeted publications and referrals in terms of visitors and clicks to our website is that these actually tend to be the highest and most qualified people that we that we engage with on a consistent basis. And really, that's because they're coming from a publication they would only be on if they're who we want to be who we want to be talking to because we're selective about the publications because we like I said earlier when we when we built the strategy we targeted specific people so we chose publications we know those people are reading and we help to give them full solutions and we help to use that content funnel of gated content blog content contributed content to drive a consistent message and help solve problems consistently um, so what we see is that our referrals actually tend to uh, tend to convert at nearly four to five times higher of a rate than any other source of traffic for our for our website uh, that's including Google search, Twitter, social, whatever it is. Um, and again, it's because A, we've brought them in from a targeted location, and B, we've brought them in with content that already solved the problem, so they're essentially raising their hand that this was an important article for me, so I'm continuing down my own my own path of discovery by following, finding the next solution and finding um, the next piece of content that I know is important to, to what I'm looking for right now. Uh, so the, the last thing I want to do is share a, a case study of, of a couple people that we've worked with to accomplish the goals of this overall funnel, but also just the goals of this this, this method of branding themselves as thought leaders in, in, in a specific industry uh, through content. Um, so Gravity Media is a client of ours, um, run by Yuri Boykov and Lubo Tokakiov um, in New York City, and they specialize in uh, multicultural marketing, helping brands build profiles and strategies to reach. Uh, different types of cultures um, in their marketing efforts. Uh, but they came to us with the goals of, A, we want to be known as, we want Gravity to be more recognized as a leader in this category of, of multicultural marketing. Um, we want to be consistently publishing content and getting Yuri and Luba perceived as the leaders in this space so that if anyone had a question on multicultural marketing, Yuri and Luba are the two people that they go to as, as those experts. Um, and finally, long term, driving exposure to Gravity and creating sales opportunities for the company um, to help them to help them grow. So the, the process that we followed is again similar to some of the stuff I mentioned earlier, but it starts with how do we build out a full strategy? How do we figure out who we're wanting to talk to? What publications are those people reading? How do we make sure the content's going to be read by them? How do we figure out what you should be writing about? Um, so it's diving into all of that uh, is that strategy component. The next point is component is actually those interviews with Luba and, and Yuri. It's how do we, either through written questions or jumping on the phone with them, ask them their expertise, ask them about their uh, their stories and things that can be used to create highly original content that, again, is from an expert authentically um, to directly to the audience. So we, we go through that extraction process. Then our team steps in and our content team comes in, takes those ideas, forms them into final versions of content. So they take raw ideas, stories, and anecdotes and write a piece of content that's not only optimized from the voice and perspective and from the perspective of, the, of Yuri and Luba and Gravity Media, but also optimized to be published on these publications and to be something that the readers want to actually engage with. So we, there, there's a lot of expertise that goes into that process of making sure, again, you're not just, it's like kind of how you control promotional content a little bit and make sure that the messages are really relevant to the audiences. You have people in that, in that content creation stage that are really thinking about that part of it. And then finally, again, it's publication and distribution. After Yuri and Luba say yes to every piece of content, we then send out through our relationships to get published on the right platforms that, they, that, that again, their audience, their marketers, um, and their, their partners are reading long term. So a quick highlight of the type of content that they've published and some of the ROI points for them. Um, Yuri uh, has an ink column that he publishes consistently on a weekly basis. Um, he's, uh, in addition to that, he's published on Forbes, OpenForms, CMO.com, and, and actually more recently has published on uh, uh, Harvard Business Review. Uh, as well. So there's uh, 
a lot of different types of publications and outlets that has helped to build the profile um, from a personal standpoint for Yuri and Luba, but also uh, for the business of Gravity to build their profile as a leader in the space, run by as a leading company in the space, run by some of the best experts in that particular industry. Another key R point of doing content is is the superfluous things that happen because you're doing this, going through this process of proving that you're an expert and and creating high quality content in your space. For example. Inc. after reading a, a few of his articles and actually a speaking opportunity that Yuri landed because of an article that Inc. was at and saw, they realized that there was a really good story there to be talking about and some ideas to share. So one of the things that came from Luba's content or uh, from Yuri's and Luba's content was a full profile of Gravity Media on Inc.com talking about the story, how they grew, their expertise, uh, and everything that, they, that they've done as a company. Um, so again, the next piece I want to talk about really past that is just is what are the key R the, what were their key ROI points of, of the full content strategy that they, that they worked with? Um, here's some of the, the more of the anecdotal um, qualitative elements of they were early early contributors to LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn asked them to to be writing. So like actually, I said earlier, actually LinkedIn opened up its platform long term to the to everyone on the platform, but before that. Yuri and Luba were one of the first 200 people allowed to publish on the platform because of the content they'd been consistently pu publishing, which was a big credibility boost for them as individuals and for the company, and it offered them a lot of circulation um, on LinkedIn before everyone opened the platform. Again, they became a weekly columnist because of the content profile he built up as an expert, received multiple awards as leaders in their industry, um, garnered some of those speaking opportunities and, and press covers that I mentioned with that Inc. article, and finally, actually, their two biggest sales in 2011 came from content that they had published um, and articles that they had written for these audiences. Um, so really everything they were looking for from, a content, from content has helped them, again, build the brand, build the profile, but also in the long term help to drive those sales and real business opportunities. Lastly, and, and lastly, I, I just wanted to let everyone know, I mean, I hope this has been insightful and valuable. Ron's about to take over uh, and, and really explain, uh, again, the distribution element of after you've written this content, whether you've published it on your blog, you publish it elsewhere, is how do you actually make sure it's read by all these people. So Ron's about to take over and really run that component uh, of the webinar. But I just want to let everyone know that I'm a resource. I'm here to help. Uh, if you have any questions at all, um, please let me know on any of these platforms, and I'm happy to get back to you. Uh, thanks, Josh. Uh, I think this was uh, very insightful. Uh, I'm going to talk about distribution, which is what uh, Tabula specializes in. But obviously, without good quality uh, target content, uh, no distribution is going to uh, do any good for you. So as marketers today, we have uh, multiple tools to uh, distribute our, our, our content. Uh, we obviously have the, the free methods of uh, distribution, which I would assume uh, all of us are using. So we'll post content on our, on our website and, and blog. Uh, we'll probably email content to our uh, house list uh, using a marketing automation tool. Uh, we'll post it on social networks, and we'll put it on YouTube, and we'll use traditional media. Uh, we'll probably try to guest post uh, on other blogs. but in recent years, what we've seen, because there's so much noise, everyone's become a content marketer, uh, it's really become necessary to also uh, pay for content distribution in order to uh, scale, uh, make it a more predictable uh, process. And there's also various tools for paid content distribution, starting from just emails to uh, purchased or uh, rented list. Uh, sponsored social updates, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, paid search, uh, provo promote content uh, using display ads, uh, or do uh, uh, what we call content discovery or, or content recommendation. The, the big differences between those free and paid methods is free are, are typically low scale, depending again on your reach, and some blogs have an amazing reach, but for most of us, it will probably be low scale and less predictable. So most of us, unless we're deep in a publishing business, really hard for us to predict what kind of reach and results our content's gonna get. Well, you switch to the uh, paid side, it's 
easier to get scale if you do it right, and it's also easier a long time to predict what kind of results you're going to get for uh, new content. Of course, it's always, always about getting ROI for, for your content. Um, so I mentioned uh, Tabula is spe uh, specializes in uh, content recommendation, and if you're using the web, you've probably seen us uh, before, so let me just go back one slide. Uh, just in case you uh, don't know what uh, Taboola does, we're a content recommendation platform, so we recommend content to people based on uh, numerous uh, signals such as uh, social media trends and what other people have uh, viewed online, and we provide those recommendations alongside articles. So when people are reading an article on, say, a USA Today or Weather.com or Eurosport, they'll get personalized content recommendations that will take them on uh, to your site. Um, so I'm going to give you some of the best practices, some tips that we've learned from working with hundreds and hundreds of brands that are promoting content on, on our platform. Um, most of these will be pretty generic to any content distribution method. And the first one is really to lock down your goals. So too often we're working with uh, companies that would like to promote content, and the first question we always ask, our account managers ask, so, so what are you trying to achieve? What, what are your goals with the specific content item and specific campaigns? It's really, really critical to nail down your goals before you start. Uh, so as an example, Salesforce, one of our, our, our good uh, partners on the distribution side, um, they acquire leads by getting people to download their ebooks and they're promoting their blog posts throughout our platform. Our engine recommends their blog posts to people that the technology thinks might be interested in those blog posts. Those blog posts have a right rail which encourages um, people to go ahead and download an ebook and of course those become leads in their system and their goals with those campaigns is to acquire new leads at a certain cost and of course anything that goes beyond the cost would not help them uh, achieve the goal and writing down those those goals was absolutely critical for the success of these campaigns. To look at a different example, um, Expedia, they invest a lot of, in building a, a great travel blog called Viewfinder which has some really cool content about travel destinations and they've been using um, Tubula to drive traffic because they're getting traffic, they're building their audience, and then they're going to take this audience and try to get them to purchase travel packages on Expedia. Um, so their goal is quite different from, from Salesforce. Their goals are usually around driving an X number of, of new visitors, uh, make sure those visitors are quality ones, which means they're going to spend a lot of time on the site, they're going to consume a lot of content, and they're going to come back. So they have a set of matrix which is very different from, from Salesforce, uh, a, a B2B company, but defining those goals, listing them down, obviously sharing them with your uh, platform is, is really, really uh, key to uh, success. So defining goals is, is absolutely critical. Making sure you can actually track those goals is also, of course, very important. So there's no real use in defining goals if you can't uh, measure them. Uh, so, for example, with the Bula, you you can um, we we provide our our tracking code. So if you've ever used Tabula, you're probably familiar with this uh, with this view. We provide you with the tracking code, just like many other platform. So you can actually track the results, the performance of your content items, and understand the click-through rates, uh, impressions. Uh, cost per action, and without this you can't really tell if your campaign works or not, uh, and it's of course impossible to, to optimize. So again, too often we, we're working with companies that would set the goal but not really, really go through um, the uh, uh, effort of putting all the tracking codes in, in place, and therefore it's really challenging to um, optimize your campaign and, and successfully track results. So you just have to be sure you have the tracking infrastructure in place before you launch any campaign. Um, another thing to consider before starting a campaign is, is um, state of mind. So 
can go back, sorry about this. So um, if you look at the three main ways of uh, driving traffic today, search, discovery, and, and display, you really have to think about the different state of minds of people when they go through to your content using these uh, three methods. Uh, when you do a search, you have a specific question in mind. So say you're in the market to buy uh, a new pair of running shoes, then you'll go on Google and you'll you'll probably type something like men running shoes reviews or best shoes 2015 so you're in a very specific goal oriented state of mind on the other hand if you're uh, on a social network say Facebook you're probably in a very different state of mind you might be looking at what your friends are doing you might be sharing something uh, and you may come across uh, a friend that's recommending uh, uh, running shoes, for example, and, and that way, or maybe it's a sponsored uh, update on Facebook and you'll get to uh, content this way. With discovery, it's again very different. Uh, you're reading an article in USA Today or The Atlantic, you get to the bottom of the article and you're served with a thumbnail and maybe a review of uh, new Nike running shoes. It's really, really important to understand the user state of mind because the type of content, even the type of page you want to serve to that person would be very, very different depending on where this person is, is coming from. So this is a very important consideration to make when you build your content uh, distribution place. Um, content items that have been performing well on our, our network our first videos, so how to videos are obviously very, very popular. Uh, behind the scenes, depending on what vertical you're in, might work. Um, interviews and anything that's authentic and and funny, again, depending on on your on your audience. When it comes to uh, articles and blogs or any text context, tips and tricks always help. Um, what we're doing here with uh, my part of the presentation, uh, helping people do a better job. Uh, lists are great because people feel they're in control and they're getting a lot of valuable information in a short amount of time. Uh, any industry secrets, Josh alluded to it, sharing information about what's working for you and, and, and that, that seems to work really well. Also earned media, so if you're, uh, say you're, you're selling running shoes and uh, 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 Runner's Magazine published an article covering your uh, new line of running shoes, you can definitely and you should promote uh, earned media. Uh, that's very credible and it's working very well for both B2B and B2C companies on our network. Uh, positive reviews, pretty much the same uh, before and after. Also pictures and slideshows seem to be working really well in different uh, verticals, so celebrities, food, fashion, and anything funny could work, again, depending on your goals and, and your audiences. But these are types of uh, contents that we see perform really, really well throughout the network. Um, another important aspect before you launch your campaign, think about targeting. Uh, most important when you start a campaign with Taboola is to think about the creative elements. Try to filter out any relevant people by thinking about the right tile. Come up with the right, if you go after millennials, think about what tiles would appeal just to millennial or men or women or the buyers of IT equipment. If you don't get the right title, if you don't get the right thumbnail, you might get higher CTR, but your CPA is going to be too high because you're going to pay too much on people who are completely irrelevant to you. So we're working very, very hard with, with clients to make sure they find tiles that would be extremely attractive to target audiences, but would filter out as, as many irrelevant people as, as possible that, that really gives you the optimal uh, cost per action. Geographic location, of course, is always critical if you only sell your your product or service in specific geos, you want to target those. Uh, sometimes we run local campaigns, so um, that's obviously very, very critical. Also demographics, um, different platforms allow for different targeting options. So Taboola, for example, we have a, a partnership with different companies so we can target our, our, our content that specific demographics. We do it for B2C and B2B, so uh, we have an integration, for example, with a company called Bambora, so we can target your content. Say you're in, you're selling a storage solution to mid-sized enterprise, we can work with you to define targeting so that people who work for 
uh, uh, those companies will see your content and it will filter out uh, other people who are not uh, IT buyers. So it's really, really important to uh, uh, target the, uh, to the right demographics. A platform, some people see better results with desktop, some people see better results with tablets or phones. Uh, co some content items might work better on specific platforms. So it's important to figure out which platform you want to target and you may want to start with all platforms and then narrow down based on what, what works. Uh, and then also overlay first and third party data. So we have very many examples of uh, content campaigns that are just targeted to uh, people who are in your CRM. So for example, if you want to run an anti-churn campaign, a retention campaign, you can overlay your first data uh, first party data and make sure only people within your CRM existing contacts you have will be exposed to content that's uh, designed to keep them using your system and not um, switch to competitors. So you can do a lot of uh, targeting with first and also third party uh, data. And finally, retargeting. Retargeting is great. So we have many examples of uh, brands that are using content and again something Josh talked to for top of funnel reaching a very broad audience once someone consumes the content whether it's sex or video we would cook it them and then retarget them on Facebook on AdWords or even with uh, another piece of content on a discovery platform like Taboola so uh, good campaigns have multiple content items in place some of them for top of funnel some of our mid funnel some are bottom of funnel some even go and and build content for retention and you can actually retarget people and, and make sure you you hit them with the right piece of content throughout their journey until they're ready to buy and 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 following that so targeting is is a very critical component of of any campaign and especially with uh, Taboola once you launch your campaign absolutely important to test everything we we, we never it's really really hard to know what's going to work uh, and if you ever talk to our head of content at, at Taboola, she'll, the first thing she'll tell is, we don't know what's going to work. So you come up with a set of assumptions of what's going to work, and then you test it. One of the beautiful things with a platform like Taboola or other paid platforms is that you can do a lot of testing. Uh, this is an example for one of our clients, uh, sales uh, uh, hair coloring products. And one of the things they tested is different thumbnails. And you can see this is a part of the of our admin uh, user interface. They tested two thumbnails in in this case. One of them is is showing a blonde woman, and the other one shows heads of uh, brown haired uh, women. And and actually the the top one provides far better results. So C CTR is far higher. Uh, we don't know why. We can make assumptions, but we really don't know why. The key is to always challenge your assumptions and test new variations of, of your images. Um, let's take another look uh, a look at another example which is uh, testing your your tile. Um, this is another company, it's called Plated, another great client of ours. Um, they provide um, uh, receipts and uh, recipes and, and food ingredients for millennials. They used in this campaign the, the same image but they tested different tiles. So the one on the right, which doesn't look a whole lot different from the one on the left, produced a reduction of 75% in, in cost per action. So it worked a lot better. We don't know why. We tested dozens of different tiles along the way. But once we find a version that works, we'll probably kill all the, all the others and focus on that one. Maybe try again slight variations to even further uh, optimize. But that's just another example that shows you that while we're not sure what the reason is, just small changes in creative can, can uh, drive major, major results. Another example is format. So this is an example of a blog. Um, one of the companies we work with uh, created blog posts and, and, and promoted them throughout our network. Uh, the call to action was uh, sign up for, uh, I think it was a two week uh, trial. And we thought that if we break the blog with uh, subtitles, uh, headings, it might have an impact on conversion. So this is what we did. We basically broke down the long form blog post and, and inserted headings. 
the result was a 57% increase in conversion, which is quite astounding. We, we were actually surprised by, uh, by this increase, but just again goes to show you that even changes in, in format could go a long way to uh, optimizing your, your funnel. And sorry about that. Just taking a moment. Lindsay, can you move the, the slide? Thanks. So the last thing is really uh, more of a conceptual tip. Um, we think content marketing is is a journey. There there shouldn't be a, a start and end date to to content marketing. So while we at Taboola run content recommendation, content discovery campaigns that do have very often start and end date, content has a long lasting effect. And when you come to think about creating content and distributing content, you really really need to look at it as a relationship building strategy and we found that content has uh, a long-lasting uh, uh, effect in terms of uh, SEO, in terms of uh, driving organic content. Some items could drive results for years and years to come and really when, when we do content marketing we need to think of it uh, this way. This is a long journey, it's going to maybe take time to see the results and we should measure results uh, over time. Um, so hopefully this uh, uh, gave you some uh, some food for thought as you're planning your uh, content uh, distribution and, and content marketing strategy. You're always welcome to uh, ask me a question. Um, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn or you can tweet me at uh, rgishri. And I guess it's uh, back to you, Maya. Awesome. So now we have our Q&A. Um, we are kind of running short on time, so I think we'll only be able to get um, to a few of these. But um, let's start with one from somebody in the audience. Um, this one, I think Josh can probably take this one on content creation, but the question is, how is the link to the white paper download designed? I'm always asking myself how to make people click because we don't seem to click um, so much in my funnel. Yeah, that's actually that's a really good question, and I assume you mean both in terms of um, how, the, how the call to action looks on like these blog posts and, and throughout the website uh, as well as how the, how the actual landing page looks in the end. Um, for us, if you, uh, I, I won't be able to pull it up right now, but if you go to like one of our blog posts, you'll see that we have a lot of bottom blog calls to action, which is kind of industry standard at, at this point, but it's let someone consume all the content they, can, they came to consume um, on the page and then offer them that next piece of information at the bottom because what happens is not only are you going to be getting um, people that have already raised their hand is very interested by reading the entire post, uh, but you've also allowed them to consume the full piece of content that you intended them to read before they see a call to action to download the next piece. Um, so you'll see we kind of have a lot of button um, banner ad type elements at the beneath blog posts. We also use a variety of other things, um, interstitials. If we see that there's an exit motion um, on the actual blog, so they're going up to uh, the exit the, the, the exit button on the on the browser or they're they're going back or something like that we actually will serve up a, a pop-up that comes up and displays over the page uh, and says uh, basically gives them a call to action to also check out the piece of content and or subscribe to the blog um, so that's another thing we use we also do scroll interstitials so if they get halfway through something will come up off the side of the page um, for them to to download um, and then finally we there's also a lot of things that come up within the content itself there could be um, if they're reading a blog post, it could be an item where it would smoothly work into a sentence and say, hey, if you, if you agree with this, check out this related um, white paper or something like that. Um, so there's a lot, of, it, it sounds like you're testing a lot of different things and you're in the right mindset uh, when it comes down, it comes down to you thinking through what are the readers thinking, what's going to get them to convert. Um, so I would just continue that, continue testing different things, check out our blog, and also obviously reach out on Twitter to me mm -hmm. and Joshua T., or via email afterwards, mm -hmm. uh, and I can kind of walk you through this personally one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. 
Awesome. Um, this next one uh, is for Ron. Um, what is the number one problem that you're consistently seeing companies make when it comes to distributing their content? Uh, I don't know that there's uh, a one one um, uh, major problem. That I, I, I think I think uh, initially, uh, and I actually would agree with uh, Josh that uh, the key is first to have really real good content because creating content nowadays is is easy. I mean, we all have phones; we can capture videos. We you know creating presentations and and blogs is is easy, but creating good content that really adds value. Uh, and people would appreciate and share is 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 really really hard. So I I would say this is still and again to me also as as a marketer that's always the challenge. How do you create enough good content uh, that 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 your audience would find useful? I, I guess that's that would be still the the major obstacle. Yeah, I think I think I'd add to that too. The so obviously the content creation component's a big issue with distribution. It's a lot of times people thinking it just happens. Um, I have a, there's actually a post um, that we just published in our blog a couple of days ago um, from uh, uh, Chad Polite who runs, uh, uh, helps run relevance.com uh, uh, which is an agency and publication. Uh, but it's, and he discussed that people kind of like publish and pray that it works out. And this pray element is like foregoing investing in like a tabula or investing in um, Properly building out social media relationships and properly building out influencer level relationships, um, I would say that like that is all. I, that's what I would reiterate there too. It's you. You have to actually go about doing it the right way and and just taking the initiative. Awesome, and that kind of segues into this question, which will probably be the last one. Um, but maybe both of you can kind of tackle this one as well. So. Um, where does the best content come from? So if you're sitting down to write and really brainstorm, um, what are kind of the elements that you can you can pull from um, when trying to develop a piece of content? Uh, I'll go ahead and, and jump into that a little bit. I'm sure Ron has a, a few really great ideas there as well. Um, for us, it obviously depends a little bit on like really the most important first step is thinking about your customer and thinking about what's the problem that you're solving for them. Um, and 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 really understanding those those problems. Um, for us, a lot of times when we're talking through with a new client, um, what they need to be talking about is what are the what are the pain points? What are like what are their clients coming to you and say like, hey, this is a big issue. Um, so their step one is how do you write um, to solve those problems right away? Um, so I, I, whether that's like sharing stories, sharing case studies, sharing uh, elements like that through content. I think I think that's important. Like just thinking about their problems. Um, also thinking about what are the wow moments where someone really all of a sudden really understands why they need your services. So if you can if you can figure out a way to communicate that element through a story or again through examples uh, or in, in content, I think focusing there on the wow moments that really get people to go from considering you to choosing you um, is an important element. And then finally thinking thinking about um, Asking your current customers what they love best about working with you, and this is something that, in addition to just talking about specifically about your solution and where you fit in your industry from what your product and service does, you also find out a little bit about the personas that work best with your company and what your best customers look like long term. So maybe you don't realize that customer service is actually like really, really well done by your organization, and that's why your customers recommend you and continue to work with you. Um, so maybe you figure out a way to integrate your prioritization on customization on customer on customer on customer service you get ideas from all those different types of angles um, so I think cust being customer centric is the most important element to ideating proper stories for you to be writing about yeah I, I, I totally agree with that and uh, I would just add that that um, like at, at Tabula. I mean, we only have uh, a small marketing team, but we have a field organization of over 100 people, and those people talk to any number of clients and partners every day. So, for us, uh, the, the field organization is a huge source of ideas. Just by just talking to them and uh, brainstorming, we, we get a ton of ideas. Uh, another source is we just would spend time researching uh, other blogs and publications and and just try to figure out what topics uh, drove a lot of uh, social engagement and ma many blogs would show you how many tweets and shares uh, they get for each post so it's it's another uh, good way to see what 
with what's kind of working for others and then maybe write a, a piece on, on an angle related to, to that. And obviously there's a lot of tools you can use like the uh, uh, like even Google Analytics um, and a lot of other analytic tools out there that can really help you understand what's trending, what, what people are reading right now. And th this also, uh, I mean, for us, that gives us a lot of ideas on what kind of to work. Awesome. Um, well, I think that is all the time that we have. Um, we wanted to thank everybody again for um, joining us today. So sorry again for the technical difficulties. Um, those things just kind of happen, but we appreciate your patience. And we, again, we will be sending over the recording and we'll try to get some kind of transcription or something um, possibly for you guys to kind of be able to catch uh, a few of those. I know some of you were asking about that, um, so we'll see what we can do there. But um, uh, be on the lookout for that email. And if there were any questions that, um, didn't get answered and that you'd still love to reach out to Josh and or Ron about, please um, feel free to tweet at them. Um, and I know they provided their contact information uh, and we'll be sure to include that in the email as well. So we'll definitely give you all the channels to be able to, to contact them for further info. Um, I hope you all have a w wonderful day and we will see you next time.